dogs are too open with fire and we're not going to the wood. Okay. Going to do it now? Yes, in a minute, in a minute. Okay. I'll definitely call back and give you thanks and I give you praise the glory and honor. I thank you for the Sunday, Lord, and I pray that touch everyone that will be coming on here on this fellowship. And I pray that everything that they hear from the speaker tonight, Lord, will be a blessing to them. Lord, I pray a grace. I pray that everything that he says will be holy, will be acceptable in your sight, Lord. I pray that you touch each and every one that's on here today, that's coming on this evening, Lord. I pray you bless and that you keep them in your care, Lord. I pray if anyone comes here as weak in spirit, that they'll be strengthened of this fellowship. And I give you thanks and I give you the praise. Touch your son's anointing, Lord. Touch him with your anointing grace, Lord. Bless him, Lord, and keep him in your care as I give you thanks and praises through Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord, bless the Lord. The Lord is to be praised. Thank you, Sister Rose. You're welcome. God bless you. I may have to mute you with your phone because there's a feedback coming. I don't know where it's coming from. Not from me. Oh, maybe. Okay. I think it's better now. Amen. 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 Pra praise the Lord. So, God bless you all. Welcome to our teleconference. Um, I see us. Uh, Sister Moore is join us. God bless you, Sister Moore. God bless you, Sister Moore. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's good to see you in the house of God today. And we yes. are just... Nice to Amen. Yeah. And we just want to glorify God today. And you know... Good that... to see you as well. Amen. Praise the God Lord. Bless God bless you, ma'am. And we just want... It. Last week was talk. We, we, the Lord put them out to talk about having the same mind. And I want to continue this part of what the Lord gave me about we the children of God is to have the mind of Christ. Amen. And um, I started with Paul writing um, to the Philippians brethren saying let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Amen. So it is very important that we understand that God want us to have the mind of Christ. It's so important. It is so important to our salvation. We are to look at the way that Jesus, hallelujah, the way Jesus lived. We are to look at the way that Jesus spoke. We are to look at the way that Jesus moved and the, the, the love and compassion that he showed to people who came to him. There's a song that says everywhere he went, he was doing good. You know, and so we have to have that sort of mindset that we want to bless someone. Not to curse, but to bless. Because Jesus came here to bless us. To bless us with the knowledge, understanding of who He is and what He is. And how we should treat each other. The love that we should have for each other. So in all our path, on a, on, a, on a journey here as a, as a child of God we are to remember that God wants us to have the same mind that Paul wrote to the Philippians and that's what we was on last week and I just want to continue that about having the same mind you know if Jesus never came to this earth if God did not robe himself in sinful flesh and if he, did not, if he had not walked among men and he had not expressed himself what God expects of us, we would never know how to walk. We would never know the type of person that we ought to be. But he came as a perfect example of what God wants us to be in obedience and in faith and in love. And in, in, in the charitable things he did, how he healed the sick, how he rose, raised the dead, how he, so many great work that Jesus did. And so we, as we walk on this, on our pilgrim journey, let us remember this mind of Christ. It was mind of love. It was mind of peace. It was a mind of humility. Because Paul right into the Corinthians says, who, Jesus, who being in the form of God. This is what um, 
um, Paul wrote to the Philippians, Jesus who was being found in the form of God. He thought it was not robbery to be equal to God. But yet he made himself of no reputation. And took on himself the form of a servant. So even though he was above all, he became lowest for us, for our sake, to show us humility. What a thing. Imagine how you know who Jesus is and what he is and how he condescend himself down to be like sinful men walked among us and we think about the fact that Jesus had no need to be baptized he was sinless he was faultless Jesus was the only man who ever walked on earth who did not sin and he did not he had no need to be baptized but he went to Jordan to John to be baptized and when John saw Jesus coming, he said, I need to be baptized by you and you come to me. So everything that Jesus did, my brethren, it was showing us humility. Humility. He said that he was found in the likeness of men, but found in the fashion as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross so of all we need to do my brethren we need to adapt we need to adapt adapt the mind of christ this is what god wants us to do god wants us and when we adapt the mind of christ we all think alike we all have the same desire we ought to serve God to worship God we all have the same uh, aspiration to give God the glory and to give him the praise and to lift him up and not ourselves but him let God get the glory and we are here to glorify God in every way we can if we do a good deed to any man we are glorifying God because we are showing the love of God to our fellow men and the Paul writing about how God because of his obedience God has highly exalted him and that's what we went through last week how God highly exalted Jesus highly exalted him and give him a name above every name now I want to look at our Deuteronomy chapter 6 um, from verse from verse 4 to verse uh, 9. Now this is what God said to Moses. And that's way back. When Moses delivered the children of Israel and God said his commandments and his law. Deuteronomy 6, Deuteronomy 6 and verse 4. He says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy strength. And these words. Now it is so important that this is the this is the, the, the foundation of our life. This is the foundation of our aspiration. This is the foundation of our hope. This is our, the foundation of our salvation that we heal all Israel. We are spiritual Israel because we are now engrafted into the family of Abraham through faith. Through our faith, we are now part of the family of God. So God is speaking to us from in the days of Deuteronomy. Hear, O Israel, we are spiritual Israel. The Lord, our God, is one Lord. He has been one Lord from the beginning. Before the world was created, He was one Lord. Hear Israel, the Lord your God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, 
with all thy might. Now imagine that this is, and this was what Jesus expressed because Jesus wanted to, came to this earth to, to please God, the Almighty God, the Creator of the universe. He was called the Son of God because He was embodied in the flesh. And this is where the Son came in. He was embodied with the flesh. He was born of the Virgin Mary. When the, 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 the Spirit of God overshadowed Mary and she was found with child as it was predicted, as it, as it was prophesied in Isaiah years ago. And so we found Jesus found in the form of man, in the form of sinful flesh, humbled himself and he's telling us that he O Israel. And, and that was in Deuteronomy. Now in Matthews chapter 22 Jesus repeat the same word Matthew chapter 22 and verse 37 Jesus said these words Jesus said unto them thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart with all thy soul with all thy mind and he went on to say this is the first and the great commandment. Now, if we just think about it, if everyone, if everyone, every child of God, I mean, every child of God, love the Lord, our God, with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind. If we do that, what a wonderful fellowship we would have. What a wonderful union of the Spirit. And then we could say like, uh, like the psalmist says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is when brethren to dwell together in unity. Because we have the same mind. We come together and we are coming together to, grow, to, to, to look about, think about ourselves. But we're coming together to be one in Christ. Amen. To have the unity of the Spirit to have the bond of peace, to have bonded in faith, to bond ourselves in, in hope of this salvation that Jesus has given us. Love the Lord with all, the Lord thy God, with all thy heart, all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is, this is, our, men, this is our, our mentality, this is our attitude that we must be on one accord. We must mind the same, same thing. We must have the same aspiration and we must have love. We must have the love which is the bond. You know, sometimes we talk about love, but we are, we are totally understand what love is. When we have peace, when we have, when we have peace with everyone, especially when we are among ourselves, when we have peace among ourselves, when the love is with us, we're not thinking about ourselves, but we are thinking about others. I said, unto this, Jesus continued to say, unto the, and, and the second commandment, and the second commandment is like unto it, that thou should love thy neighbor as thyself. And this is Matthew 22. And verse 37 to, th to verse 37 or 8 to 40. And on these com two commandments hang the laws of the, pro and the prophet. That's a commandment. That is a commandment. That we should love the Lord. It's a commandment. So when we love the Lord, we, we, we walk in the pathway. We, 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 we walk in the footstep of Jesus. And not only the footstep of Jesus, but also the apostles. We have to walk in their footsteps. We have to mind the same thing. We have to say the same thing. And of course we know that some people can use the Bible to suit themselves and to mis mislead others. As I don't know if you see you know, what happened in Jamaica, how this pastor become a cult and people was following him. And they were led away. And people died because of that. Because people can use the Bible to manipulate others. So we are to be know the word of God, have the word of God in us. 
This is the first, second commandment, love thy neighbor. Love thy neighbor as thyself. And on the, can we, you know, we have to look inside ourselves and see that there's love in us. That we don't have any grudge, animosity, strife. That can't be, they, if we're children of God, we can't have strife in our heart. We can't have malice. You know, we must have the peace of God. And, you know, um, I'm thinking about Abraham. You know, God called Abraham out of Earl of a Childies, and he took with him his nephew Lot. And we see how there was strife between the herdmen, herdmen, herdmen of Lot and the herdmen of, of Abraham. And because Abraham was a peacemaker, we children of God, you know, when we think about Abraham, we have to think that is the mind of Christ. Abraham was a friend of God because he had the mind of Christ. And Abraham, there was a strife between the herdmen of Lot and the herdmen of Abraham. And Abraham said, we are brethren. We are brethren. You know, we are brethren. If we are brethren, why, why, are, we, why are we having this, this issue? We are brethren. You know, we, you know, why are we having this issue? So he said, okay, if that is the case, you go, you, you, you choose. You remember, Abraham was the leader. But even though he was the leader, he said to Lot, you choose the plains of the north, the plains of the south. Which one, which one you want? If you go to the north, I will go to the south. That is a peacemaker, brethren. That is a peacemaker. Abraham had the mind of Christ. Sometimes, I mean, we, we don't think about that, but maybe we would say, some people, we, we would say of ourselves, maybe some people say, well, God called me, he didn't call you. So I, 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 you go that way, and I will go this way. I, I want to go that way. But he didn't. He told God not to choose. And that saw the plains of Sodom. And sometimes it tells us not, not everything that is shiny is good. Not everything that looks pretty is good. Because when he went down there, they see what he saw. The, 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 the immorality that he saw when he go down there. That the Bible says is grieve his soul. He grieve him. So, you know, it's not everything that is glitter is gold. But the, the point I'm making is that Abraham was a peacemaker. So we talk about Abraham, we are children of Abraham. And we have to be peacemakers, have that same mind. We should love the brethren. We should be at peace with the brethren. We should have, we should look in our heart and say, boy, there's no one of my brethren that I am offended, that offend me. And if they did, I forgive them. And I can pray for every one of my brethren. I can pray for everyone. I would not exclude one, and I would not wish to one any evil. I love the brethren. Yes. It's the mind of Christ. Of these two commandments, just of only these two commandments that we need to keep. These two commandments. Amen. Love the Lord with all our heart and all our soul and with all our mind. When we love Him, we, we love His Word. Because, you know, God is in His Word. The only way, the way we love God is His Word. We can't physically see, we can't see God, we can't see Him. We see Him in His Word. So we love His Word and He honors His Word. He says He honors His Word above all His name. So we see Him in His Word. And we walk in His Word and we live in His Word. Our sister was always reminding me that Jesus said, David said that thy word shall be a light to my path and a lamp to my feet. A lamp to my path and a light to my feet. The word of God is what we need to cling to. Yes. Love the word of God. And the Father says, then I want to read Matthew 23, verse 41. While the Pharisees gathered together, they asked him, 
Jesus asks the Pharisees, saying, What think of Jesus? Whose son is he? And they said unto him, The son of David. And he said unto them, How then do a David in the spirit call him, Hallelujah, call him Lord? Understanding God, understanding who Jesus is. So the Pharisees say, Jesus the Christ was the son of David. But Jesus said, how can Jesus, because he's Lord, understand the concept of Lord. The Lord, remember we read the Lord thy God is one Lord. Jesus is Lord, but they could not perceive, the Pharisees could not perceive the great man that stood before them. They could not understand the great man who stood before, before them. The woman of Samaria, when she came to fetch water, she did not realize the, that Jesus was there. The, uh, the presence of God representing God in his fullness because uh, G, the Bible says in him in Jesus dwell the fullness of the Godhead bodily she did not perceive the Pharisees did not perceive what a great man stood before them so he said what think he whose son is Christ and this is the son of David and Jesus said unto them, How then did David call him Lord? How then did David call me Lord? That's what Jesus was saying. If I be the son of David, how then David call me Lord? And the Lord said, I'm reading from Matthew 22. Um, and the Lord says, And Jesus continued, said, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. So J Jesus was, you know, he was awesome in every way. And he says, if David then call him Lord, how then is he the son? No man was able to answer my word. Neither do any man from that time ask him any more questions. You see, God is so great. Jesus is so great. That's why I love the Lord. Mm. Hallelujah. I love the Lord. He is so great. He is so high. You can't get over him. He is so low. You can't get under him. He is so wide. You can't get around him. He says, from that time, no man answer him. Answer him a word. No, do it. Uh, do it. Any man from that time ask him any questions they reach a full stop because they realize how awesome how awesome Jesus was and then in um, Corinthians 2nd Corinthians um, 2 verse 13 2nd Corinthians 13 verse 11 this is Paul writing to the Corinthians brethren and we're talking about having the one mind. Our mind can't be perfect unless our mind is like the mind of Christ. Paul says to the Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 13, 11. Finally, brethren, finally, farewell. Be perfect. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind, live in peace, oh glory to God, live in peace, and the God of love and peace shall be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss, all the saints salute you. Finally, brethren, farewell. Be perfect. The Bible says, be he perfect because the Lord our God is perfect. That is why. 
But if we did not understand and knew about Jesus, if we did not understand Jesus, if we did not have an understanding of who Jesus is, if we could not perceive Jesus by the way he lived when he walked on earth among men, if we could not perceive him, then we would not know the type of mind that God wants us to have. We would not understand the type of mind that God wants us to have if we did not see Jesus. If Jesus did not appear to us, if he didn't come down on earth and dwell among us, we would not understand the type of mind that God wants us to have. Amen. So finally, brethren, be perfect. Our mind, if our mind is perfect, then we are perfect indeed. If we adapt the mind of Christ, be of good comfort, be of good comfort, of one mind, of one mind. We all need to have the same mind. Live in peace, in peace, and the God of love and peace shall be with you. Because God is not the author of confusion. And God is one. Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one Lord. The God of peace. Be of one mind. Be of the same understanding. See Jesus. Understand who Jesus is. Know who Jesus is. He's a God of peace. He's a God of love. He's a God of humility. When we think about what Jesus did when before he was uh, before he was before he was brought before Pilate, how at the Lord's Supper, the Bible says he put a towel around his waist and he went and he washed. He washed his disciples' feet. That is showing us humility. Yes. You imagine he's God came in the form of flesh and yet he washed his disciples feet showing us how we should love each other that we should not consider ourselves above our fellow brother our fellow sister in Christ because we are all one we're all equal in the sight of God. And God loves us all with the same love. We are all the children of God. And you know, like a mother would like her children to live in peace. Like a mother would like her children to be in harmony, to be together. So does God want his children, his saints, to be one. Brethren, be of good comfort, be of one mind. So when we have, when we have one mind, we, there's no need for us to be disputing and to be clamoring or be, you know, arguing about, uh, about anything because our mind is in Christ. And our mind is in, in God. And so we are in harmony, we're in peace. So it's so be perfect. Be of one man, be of good comfort, live in peace, live in harmony, have the oneness. Because Jesus said, my Father and I are one. I am in the Father and the Father is in me. We are one. Look at, we are, Jesus and God is inseparable. They are inseparable. They are one. So I'm going looking on to James. James, um... James chapter 1 verse 22 to 25 James chapter 1 22 to 25 and he's saying now be he but be he thank you thank you and not hearers only deceiving your own self be doers of the word you know, there's some people who know the Bible like the back of their hand. They know 
Every, they, they could tell you verse from Genesis to Revelation. They know the word. But it's not what you know, it's what you do. It's, it's not just what hearing the word, it's doing the word. Be he not doers, be he doers of the word. Follow the word, live the word. Let the word manifest in our actions. Faith without work is dead. Be he doers of the word, do the word. Love. As the Bible says, love one another. Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength. Don't just talk about it, do it. Be he doers of the word, not, on, not hearers only. Deceiving your own selves. So if you say, oh, I know the word of God said that and God says that and I'm not doing it, I'm deceiving myself. For it says, James went on to say, For if for if any be hearers of the word and not doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in the glass. And he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straight away forgot the manner of man he was. So, you know, it's saying to us, um, if we just hear the word, we'd be like looking in the mirror and seeing what we are. And then when we turn up away from the mirror, we forget what we look like. Basically, this is what he's saying. Behold himself, he goeth away and straight away he forgot. So only when we're doing the word, the word is in us. If we just hear the word, it goes through one ear, it goes through another. If we do the word, we are living the word, and the word is living in us. So we shouldn't just say, God is love, and we should love the brethren. We should manifest that in our actions. But he says, went on to say, James went on to say, but whosoever look it into the perfect law and liberty and continue in them, and be he be not forgetful, Hearer, but doer of the word, this man shall be blessed in his deed. So, doing the word, and so let the mind of Christ be in us. Let us ask God to give us a mind of Christ. Let us look at the, the Lord Jesus, look at the way what he did when he was upon earth, how he pleaded and he, he preached the word. And he healed the sick, and he, lay, he raised the dead, and so many great works he did. He fed the multitude, he gave the beatitude, and everywhere he went, he was doing good. It is important as we are children of God that we try, strive to do good, that we strive to do what is good before God and before our fellow men. It is good that we become an example of righteousness. The Bible says we are the light of the world and we should realize that without us in the world, the world would be in darkness. We should know and understand that we, Jesus said, we, we his children, his church, the church that he established today is the light of the world. Without us, the world is in darkness. So let us underestimate what we are. What we are not only to God, but to the world. I mean from John, John chapter 3. I'm going to read a few verses from John chapter, sorry, John chapter 8. And I'm going to read from verse um, 53. And it says, Jesus said unto, he said unto the Jews, Now we know that, the, and said the Jews unto him. I read from verse 48, sorry. John 8 verse 48. And Jesus said, and the Jews, and answered the Jews and said unto him, Say he well, 
that thou art a Samaritan and has a devil. Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father as he do honor me. And I seek not my own glory. There is one that seeketh, that seeketh and judgeth. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If a man keep my saying, he shall never. You know, I believe the word of God. I really love the word of God. And I trust the word of God. If verily, verily, Verily mean truly, truly I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. That's why I said I am the resurrection and the life. Any man that liveth and believeth on me shall never die. Hallelujah. He is the resurrection. Jesus is life. Jesus is eternal life in us. Jesus is our hope of glory. Jesus is our hope of salvation. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death, never die. So when we love God and we keep the word of God, believe it right now, we are immortal. We are mortal according to the word of God. And I have to go by the word of God. And I live by the word of God. I believe the word of God. Then go on to John chapter 8 verse 52. It says, And the Jews said unto him, Now we know you have a devil. Abraham is dead. And the prophet, Then thou says, If any man keep my saying, They shall never taste dead. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead, and the prophets are dead, and thou makest thyself? Jesus answered, If I honor myself, I honor nothing. It is my father that honoreth me. And he say that he is God. Yet, how have not known him, but I have known him. And if I say, I should say, I know him not, I shall be like a liar. Hallelujah. But I know him and keep his word. Your father, your father Abraham, Abraham. rejoiced to see, to see my day. And he saw it and was glad. Oh, praise God. So we talk about Abraham. Abraham saw Jesus. Hallelujah. Saw the glory of God. Saw the glory of God coming down to earth. Saw the glory of God manifesting in this man Jesus. God, his teaching. He came to heal the sick, to raise the dead. And to preach the gospel. And Abraham saw it and Abraham rejoiced. And Abraham was glad. Because Abraham had the mind of Christ. We're talking about the mind of Christ. Abraham had the mind of Christ, so he rejoiced. And the, 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 the Pharisees were saying, oh, we are children of Abraham. Okay, so we, you know, we don't accept what Jesus, they did not accept what Jesus was saying, but they did not realize that Abraham had the mind of Christ. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. And said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and thou hast seen Abraham. And he said, Jesus answer them, answer unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Before Abraham was, I am because Jesus was there from the foundation of earth from the foundation of the world Jesus existed 
He was there was in creation. Jesus was what created everything. He's the word of God. And that's why he's inseparable. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word became flesh. Jesus is the word of God. If we love Jesus and accept Jesus, we are accepting the Almighty God. We are accepting the power of the Almighty God. Verily I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Abraham gave arms to Melchizedek, who had no beginning of days, now no end of days. And he met with Melchizedek after the slaughter of the king. Jesus was there from the beginning of creation. And he came to establish, to give us this wonderful hope of salvation. How great is our God. And then they went on to say, that the Jews, they took up stone to stone him. Some people can't tell the truth. Some people will not accept the truth. Some people are blind to the truth. Some people lock themselves away from the truth. Some people are fearful of the truth. The Bible says light came in the world and the men prefer darkness rather than light. They want to live in the dark. They want to live, they don't want because the light will show their deed. And all the wickedness and the badness and morality, the light shows all those things. Men want to be in darkness because their deeds are evil. So they could not accept Jesus for who he was and for what he is. Praise God. Let this mind, brethren, let this mind be in you, the same mind that was in Christ Jesus. Adapt the mind, adapt the mind of Christ. Adapt that mind that was humble. Adapt that mind that was peaceful. Adapt that mind was love and compassion. Adapt that mind, let this mind be in you. And the scripture, I'm um, looking at Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15, Paul writing to the Romans, We then that are strong are to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. We who are strong are to bear the infirmities. Everybody can't be strong. And when we see someone is weak, we are to bear them up. Especially our brethren. We are to bear them up. We are to build them up. We are to brace them up. Because not everyone is strong. Not everyone has the same amount of faith. But God loves us all. Thomas did not believe that Jesus was risen from the dead. He did not believe. Even though Jesus said that he, the Son of Man, shall be three days in the heart of the earth, and on the third day he shall raise. He did not believe. And when the disciple tell him, he said, Only if I can put my hand in his side, I will believe. Some of us, our faith are weak, but we should bear them up. We who are strong are to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. We're not to please ourselves. We are going, we have one destination. Heaven is our destination. Oh, praise God. And I think every one of us, you know, I've met some really wonderful people in the past. You know, I mean, saints of God. I've met some really wonderful saints of God in the past. And I said, oh God, 
I would like to join them one day when God call us home. I would like to share, you know, our story about how what we've been through and all the temptation and all the wickedness and all, all the tears and the sorrow. I would like to meet them and say, how you got over? How did you get over? How did you get over all those things? You know, when we listen, when I look, look around and see what the Lord has done for me, it makes me want to go all the way. And some of us, we can look back. Where God has taken us from? Where has he taken us from? What has he done for us? The deliverance. How he delivered us. When we thought there was no way out. And God made, he made a way for us where there was no way. Where we could not see the way. But he made the way. Our God is a way maker. And this is where faith comes in. Because when we have faith in him, we know that whatever situation we find ourselves, he is able to bring us out. He is able to make a way. Not just in, it's not just how he made a way for the children of Israel when they came out of Egypt. When the children of Israel came out of Egypt, and when they look and they saw the Red Sea in front of them, they saw the Red Sea in front of them, and they saw the mountains on the left, mountains on the right, and Pharaoh's army behind them. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. They were trapped. They were trapped. Mm -hmm. There was no way. They couldn't climb the mountains with the chariots. Mm -hmm neither to the left nor to the right and they couldn't go and cross the sea and they couldn't turn back to go back to Egypt because fear army was coming they were trapped oh glory be to God and when you thought there was no way huh? glory when, you, when we thought there would be when they all thought there's no way Oh God, hallelujah, God intervened. And sometimes in our life when we think there's no way, God is waiting to intervene. We just gotta open up, we just gotta trust Him. We just gotta say, my God is coming, my God is coming, He's coming, He's coming, He's coming, my God is coming. Oh, glory be to God. And God said to Moses, what is that you have in your hand? Hallelujah. Stretch your rod across the sea. Oh, glory. Can you imagine how awesome that was? And how, you know, if you can just put yourself in the situation, how awesome that was when there was no way out. And God, Moses, stretched his hand across the sea and the water was divided. Can you imagine how awesome that was? And the children of God, the Bible says the children of God went through the Red Sea on dry land. Hallelujah. I love God. I really, I love God because, you know, I, I, I've proven that God can do anything, anything, anything. There's nothing. And the Bible says there's nothing impossible for God. And when we have this assurance that God is with us because we love him. When we love him, we have the assurance that he will. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord is upon the righteous and his ears is open to their cry. So when we have the Lord with us, we don't need to fear. No, we have no need to fear. Because we have the perfect love of God. And God is with his people. So it says, in Romans chapter 51 it says, let every one of us please his neighbor for this is good to edification. For even Christ pleased not himself, but it is written. He's God, he did not please himself. He did not come down to earth to please himself. He came down to earth to suffer, to bled and to die. That's what Jesus came down for, to suffer, to bled, and to die, to redeem us. To redeem us. For even Christ, please not himself, 
he, 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 he did not want to please himself. He wanted to please the Almighty God, his Father. Because it is written, the reproach of them, reproach it, fell upon me. So he took all our sins. He took all our reproaches, fell upon him. And he carried it. He carried it. For whosoever things are written aforetime were written for our learning. That we choose patient. It's one thing we need as well, patient. And comfort of the scripture. And the, the scripture is, you know the word of God is so comforting. We don't realize, sometimes we don't realize how comforted the word of God. He says, true patience and the comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Now the God of patience, our God is God of patience, and consolation grant you to be like-minded one towards another according to Christ. Now the God of patience and consolation grant you, grant me, grant you to be like-minded. The God of patience and consolation one towards another in love, in peace, in harmony, in oneness according to in Christ that he may, went on to say that he may be of one mind and of one mouth glorify God even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ when we have one mind we are in love we love each other when we have one mind we see things in one light we see things in the light of God God becomes, the Word of God becomes our anchor. It becomes our, uh, our, our, our sail. Because a sail directs the ship. The anchor holds the ship. So the Word of God, when we have the Word of God, we have the anchor that holds us firm. And we have the sail that directs us in the straight path. That ye may be of one mind of one mouth glorify God even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ my brethren let us be of one mind let there be no discretion in our, in our faith towards God let us be full of faith and let us be full of love and peace and joy and the peace of God which passeth all understanding for oh, glory all understanding we cannot comprehend it the peace of God is uncomprehendable it's a peace that we can't find in this world it's a peace that is, there's no law against the peace of God the peace of God that passeth all understanding may he dwell may that peace dwell in you and we seek to have the same mind nothing is important in this world wealth and riches aspiration they we can call them down what we need is the mind of Christ so as we start off with Philippians chapter um, 2 let this mind be in you let this mind be in you brethren let this mind be in you the mind that was in christ jesus who thought it not robbery he did not thought it was robbery to the equal to god he made of himself no reputation hallelujah but he took on the form of sinful flesh that he may redeem us and save us Bless the Lord. Thanks. God bless you, my brethren. I have to close here. God bless you. Um, uh, let us seek to have the mind of Christ. We need to have the mind of Christ to make it to make this journey. Because so many things is happening today. 
so many things and many are led astray and I'm shocked sometimes when I see so many people are gone astray, gone from the ordinance, gone from the laws of God and following false prophecy. Let us follow God. Let us follow Christ. Let us follow the word of God. May the Lord bless you and keep you, cause his face to shine upon you. Amen and amen. 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 God bless you, um, Sister uh, Sister Moore. God bless you. God have it you. Uh, can I ask you to just close us in prayer? God bless you. Father, we want to give you thanks for the word tonight. Thank you, Amen. Jesus, because your word is life. Thank you for Jesus Christ, who in his deity, Lord, humbled himself, Lord, to show us the way, to show us love, to show us how we can live in peace, to Amen. show us unity, my God. Father, we thank you tonight, and I pray, God, as the conference go on week after week, Lord, that some unsaved person listening, Lord, that you may touch them and help them to come to know you. As we as we come to the end, Father, we pray that you will keep us, bless us, my God, help us to be true to Amen. you, my God, help us to keep our hearts and our minds stayed on you. Because we realize, Lord, that we are in the last day. Mm. And help us, my God, because you were the he that um, endures to the end. The same shall be saved. Help us there to be there for uh, one another, my God. Amen. Because we are our brother's keepers. Bless us, my God, and help us to continue looking and trusting you in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. God bless you, Sister Noah. God bless you. Amen. Brother David, bless you too. Have a good week. God bless you. Brother David, God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Sister Warner and Brina, God bless you. Oh, amen. God of love be with you. Amen. Praise his name. God bless you. Amen. God bless you.